Hello and welcome back to Dog's Life. In this episode, we'll be wrapping up Lake Miniwawa. Once Jake wakes up from his little nap. Here we go. So I'm free to wait for something I may have said earlier. I do like the save system. It's just a really cute way of saving. I like being able to take a nap in a kennel just to chill out a bit. It answers one of the age-old questions as well, which is when do these characters eat or sleep? We've seen both. He eats what he can scavenge from the garbage, and he sleeps whenever he needs to save. <laughs> Little... I hesitate to call it realism, but it's there. Versibility would probably be a better term. So let's head down this abandoned road that we never bothered with before, and see the Mini Wawa Hotel. And we'll see what kind of lodgings Mini Wawa has to offer to everyone. I mean, we'll know what lodgings we have, but... I quite like the hotel. It's a nice little area. It's fairly compact, so everything's fairly close together. It's got a little hill up here where there's a few things, and... I was kind of impressed with myself on this one, because I managed to find this bone entirely through memory of exactly where the digging point was without having to use the uh, bone vision. I like it a lot. So that's kicking things off with a bang. There's a lot of the different scents up here that we'll be coming back to. But there's something else over there first. This one's going to be more like the usual method because this one doesn't really, unlike the other areas mm, of Lake Miniwawa, we'll cross elbow. over with the other areas. This area is fairly self contained. Unfortunately, as will the rest of the game be. It's, uh, We've seen the most interestingly uh, linked together levels, and now it's back to the old status quo of go to a level, clear it out. Which is a shame, but I did quite like the linkage while it was there. It made things more interesting, and was a good way of making the location feel like one big location, instead of multiple tiny little levels. So let's head inside. That's odd. Hey there, sweetie chops. Tonight is the opening of my simply fabulous new act, but I can't perform without my adorable wigs. Can you find my wigs for me, sweetheart? It'll be worth it just to see this guy's fabulous act. I kind of like this guy, despite the ridiculous stereotyping, because I kind of like his gimmick. He's an amusing character with a dick with a. His name's fairly on the nose. His name's Elton Jack, as you'll see in the uh, accompanying radio broadcast for SCSKI, in which he gets an interview. Well, let's just encourage him a little with a little dancing along to his piano music. I get the most uh, mileage out of the uh, beggings in this area just because of the dancing to his piano songs. But yeah, we already know where one of the wigs is. You may have seen it's uh, smoking in the corner there. Which is Rooks, it's no smoking establishment, but let's just give that to him now. Marvelous, Scooby! Bring me the rest of my beloved wigs, and my tremendous talent will burst forth in all its gorgeousness. Some people think I'm a dead ringer for John Revolta. I kind of like this one. Uh, my little nickname for this guy that I just come up with <laughs> is King Midis, because while well, King Midas turned everything he touched to gold, this guy apparently turns everything he touches to a MIDI file. But they're entertaining enough, so... And after that reception, he needs a little encouragement, because that's just rude. And also, I have to admire his professionalism, because he's constantly being pelted by tomatoes throughout this side quest, and he still keeps playing without missing a beat. I'm kind of impressed on that level. He certainly doesn't give up easy. You can't come through here. Not until you find my dog. 
that may be the flattest, maybe Boston attempt at an accent I've ever heard. It was all one note. But there you go. And here we have a wig just appropriate for that voice. And the one that may have worked better with the John Travolta uh, comment. And yeah, every celebrity mentioned in this name, in this game, which there isn't many of them, but they are like uh, John Travolta, and uh, in the radio thing you'll hear Leonardo DiCaprio mentioned. They're mentioned with these really slight alterations to their names in kind of a lazy way, like uh, John Travolta, or Leonardo DiCaprio, that kind of thing. <laughs> they just kind of skip a syllable from the name and hope it's good enough. So let's collect a few of these. Weaving expertly between the colours we don't need to go for the purples. Well, except for them when I nicked the yellow and then just gave up on the whole ideal and just grabbed all of them. <laughs> so that's the usual explore the corners and the spawn zones and everything like that. And in the meantime, there's a new wig. But we'll be picking that up later when we've given this one in. Drake was quite dashing with a quiff. <laughs> Super! Collect two more wigs and I'll throw you a simply scrumptious bony maroney. Well, bless them, my soul. This wig makes me all shook up. I kind of like the baseline on this one. It's a fairly generic one, but it's well put together for MIDI. Even the camera's getting jiggy with it. <laughs> Yeah, that was just Jake showing off. I'm sorry, Elden, we don't mean to upstage you. But actually we do. So this one may be one of my favourite wigs, because uh, you can see what it is from here. <laughs> yeah, let's see how he goes when punked out. That's scrummy! One more wig and that bone is yours to own! That's odd. Now I feel this strange urge to put on a dog collar. I kind of like the rhythm of this one. Again, they're all fairly generic bass lines, but they're well chosen. And I like this obvious that Mars is hitting an invisible wall there. <laughs> we can't cross it, neither can they. He's safe. He's like the Pope. He's got a little bulletproof glass case around him to protect him while he plays his midis for everyone to hate. <laughs> and let's wrap up this quest with this final wig. You can get these in any order, but this wig feels like the most appropriate ending for the quest because of his reaction to it. You sweet thing! There's no business like show business! Voila! Oh, that other stuff is too loud. My sensitive nerves need soothing. And yeah, this is the most ridiculous of the songs. <laughs> Kinda cute, but doesn't even use the same instruments. So let's leave Miss Sandra D, who's lousy with virginity, and get out of here. That was probably one of the more ridiculous side quests. Mildly amusing at times, but again, the stereotyping's a bit much, but then again, everyone in this entire game's a stereotype, so... 
game's kind of like South Park, it's defending everybody all the time. <laughs> so let's collect a few more of these scents, although we can't get all of them right now, because some of them are actually in that courtyard that we can't access without being able to use this dog here, who has 30 bones to our 90. This is just not fair. Bone but he is probably one of my favourites uh, of the minigame dogs because uh, of his effects when you're actually controlling him, so I'm looking Whoa, forward to that. Something die. And now we've got close to all of the purple scents, the last two again are in that kitchen. So, uh, let's see what else we can do in the meantime. We're heading our way over to the minigame sense, but there is have one other thing we can do on the way there. So let's get this done. This one's kind of cheeky because it actually spawns them just outside of the range of when they spawn in, but because of the direction you're moving, you'll always just start seeing them before you get to a place where you can change direction. So you'll always kind of... it's fairly cleverly laid out in that way. Oh, we had nowhere to go but forward there. And now we're uh, in a place where there's much more freedom, it gives us the location pretty much instantly. But I thought that was an interesting kind of uh, thing that they did with that place, and just far enough away that you'd be, find it hard to find the next one, while also being just close enough that they'll just spawn in as you're getting lost. I don't know why the jingle didn't play here. Sometimes the game has trouble loading the jingles. Maybe it's because the area music started playing first. Well, let's grab this bone and head up that hill for some mini games. Ideally, unfortunately, Jake is not a spider, so we'll have to go the long way round. So let's grab the uh, red scents first. Here we go. Let's chase him down. <laughs> no problem. Sixty-two okay. bones ahead of him. He has superior bone power. Three, two, one, go. This is not going to last long. <laughs> Boom. Thank goodness the generous hitboxes. So now we'll see what he does. Well, she actually, her, is a female dog, and her name is Pixie Fru Fru. Pixie Fru Fru, I told you not to wander off. I need you to get rid of some rats. Uh oh. No way that little thing can stand up to those rats. Are you sure she's a Chihuahua Joberman mix? <laughs> that means she's as aggressive as a Chihuahua while being as somewhat intimidating as a Doberman. Ideally. One thing I always find quite interesting about Doberman mixes is they always have the fur of the Doberman, like the pattern and stuff, but the body of a of the, of the mother, so to speak, or whichever uh, one is the female in that particular kind of pairing in general, because um, they always have the coat of the Doberman and the build of the other, which I find kind of interesting. It kind of implies that maybe the Doberman's fur is some kind of dominant gene, or something along those lines, or maybe controlled by a few genes that end up dominant. So it's just something that's interesting to me that that always happens when it's a Doberman mix. It's never a Doberman with a different pattern, it's always a different dog with a Doberman pattern. You never see a Doberman Chihuahua mix who, say, is a Doberman with golden fur, for example. That just doesn't really happen much. But let's continue. The, obviously, what this Chihuahua can do is she's a mouser. So it's time for her to catch all ten of these mice that are infesting this hotel. We have plenty of time to do this. This time limit is not scary in the least, but the throwing can be a little of a pain. I do like the rats go completely stiff with you for them though, it's like, yeah, we're not getting out of this, let's just try and <laughs> reduce the damage. Let's not fight rats, let's just let it happen. Yeah, we have to throw these rats in the bin, which is uh, not particularly secure, but whatever. It's humiliating at least, that's probably why they don't come back out again. 
They have been shown their place. It is in the trash. Because they are trash mobs. A girl, Pixie, Fru, Fru. There are four more. Not anymore. Oh, Pixie, Fru, Fru. So yeah, two of them are always in this kitchen, which is, makes them at least easy to corner. They never actually leave the kitchen unusually, but uh, let's get this finished off now. Got one more in the courtyard and one more in the kitchen after this one, so let's toss this guy in the trash. Go for it, Pixie Baby! Just two more! I like that guy, he's encouraging. Makes me feel good about myself. <laughs> One more. Sorry, sir, you got drowned out by your own kitchen. Bam. There they are, just chilling in the bins where they belong. You did it, Pixie Fru Fru. You're as good as any Boom City rat catching dog. Boom City. The name rings a bell. That's where those dog nappers said they were headed with Daisy. Time to find and rescue oh, Daisy. Hey. Oh yes, she will be mine. Boom City, here I come. I hope. And it oh, finally clicked after all the listenings of all the times hearing Lake Miniwawa and Boom City together. He has finally clicked that his next destination needs to be Boom City. So let's finish off these scents. Do the uh, last mini game. And then we can find a way there. Apparently, that guy's a really big fan of Miss Peaches. Probably from Boom City. So let's just slink past the hotel and the church. I think that's what that's meant to be. I can't quite tell really. Might be just. And then grab this bone. And then it's time for those yellow scents. This one is one of the less interesting boards as well. It's just not particularly good compared to the last one especially. The last one's the best one in the game, the one at the uh, radio tower. And show that dog that I rule. Three, two, one. And by last I don't mean the last one in the game, I mean the last one that was in the last video. The one at the Lake Midwawa Mountain. This one's fairly straightforward. Start with the closest squares, then branch out to the bigger ones. And you'll pretty much have it in the bag. The middle square will just kind of happen, as the outer squares do as well. So let's just let you get the outer squares first, because they're worth more points. As you can see, it's kind of another symmetrical kind of board, but it's uh, not a particularly interesting one. Uh, Pixie Foo Foo is nowhere near to be able... There she is, just coming into view now. And we're just about to uh, finish her off. Boom. It's always amusing that camera angle because defense completely obscures the actual bone. Especially because if they had full control over the camera, they could have had it a little bit higher there. So now we have Whoa, 95 bones. That's what it's all about. We actually only have 30 more in the entire game. And all of them are to be found in Boom City. So here we are, the hotel's completely completed. So let's move on. After a brief uh, chill out session, because that took some time. Yeah, I'll cut that one out because it's not the uh, end of video save, because now we are going to head to the train station. Just one last jaunt through the entirety of Miniwawa on the way there. Overall, I like Miniwawa the most because of the intertwined nature of the levels. Uh, the very last little part of the uh, level being so isolated is kind of a shame, but I like the way the rest of the levels put together, and I like the way it looks because of the snow. It looks pretty nice. Uh, the ice physics can be a little annoying, but they don't come into it much, so here we go. Now, you may have noticed that bridge we kind of went halfway across before when getting the sense here. We didn't go all the way across because there was no points. The Dogman wouldn't have let us pass. 
I don't know how many bones he needs at this point, but at 95 we have all the bones we can get right now, and we are well past that, so it's time for him to just lay down and let us go. So here we are, boarding the train to Boom City. So let's catch up with Wayne and Dwayne and see what they're up to. You may be in the wrong line of work, Wayne. Oh, mind your own beeswax, Dwayne! <laughs> Hello? Dwayne speaking. Well, did you collect some nice clean mountain dogs to supplement those nice clean Clarksville dogs? Uh, yes, Miss Peaches. <gasps> Excellent. I must have only the freshest, most organic animals. Deliver them to the Boom City Dog Pound. Now. Uh, can I ask a question, Miss Peaches? Oh, very well, if you must. You're not gonna hurt them little doggies, now are you? Are you questioning my genius, you overgrown ox? <laughs> no, Miss Peaches. Uh, Wayne? What? That was Miss Peaches. I think maybe she could use some therapy. Oh, for pity's sake! <laughs> Wait! Look! At last! I actually quite like Dwayne, most of the uh, trio of villain characters, because, as you can see in that cutscene, he seems to be the most on the ball, surprisingly, despite being the dumb one in the way he stereotypes. He actually made the most interesting points in that cutscene. Wayne, in fact, was stupid going into dog catching, considering his allergies. And Miss Peaches is a little bit on the crazy side. He's noticed both of those facts, and while he's being talked down by his superiors, he is correct on both counts. He's stupid, but he's perceptive. Which is why I kind of like him. Like, as a person. <laughs> I'd kind of- I'd hang with Wayne. <laughs> So well, here we are in Boom City. New area and a completely new theme. Quite a nice one as well, quite jazzy. I quite like this area. It's infested with taxis. <laughs> but now we're in the big city, I think it's time we class things up a little. We are filthy. I'm filthy. Better get clean. After all, if we're gonna have an audience with Miss Peaches soon, we'll want to be spotless. Hey now. That's what I call classy. So, here we go. That's our sneak preview of the new area. And here's where the kennel is, in this little wooded area at the back. This little garden. Well, we've finally arrived at the big city. So let's save for real. And next time, we'll begin to explore the... Honestly, the smallest level in the entire game, Boom City. But also the lead up to the finale. So, welcome to this game's climax. Or at least the build up to it. See you next time. Goodbye.